In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to the Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Deal Board. And today we have an exciting show talking about how you can increase the value of your business or even just increase the growth of your business through social media. And we've got a couple of great guests on the show today, right, Andy? We do have a couple of great guests. You have a spectacular guest. Yeah. Well, you know, she's an amazing entrepreneur. She's an amazing marketer. She also happens to be my best friend. So I've had this insight and this incredible story that uh, Carrie Cole has about the growth and eventual sale of cosmetics really based on social media and specifically just an Instagram followers. That's great. And I have Corey Sabin from Video Bolt. And we are talking about video and how important video has become for social media. I mean, you could see it on Instagram, and you can see it on Facebook that, uh, you know, your videos get so many more hits and so many more likes and so many more uh, engagement. So uh, video is so important. And he's got some great statistics. And Video Bolt is a great tool to kind of quickly make videos that look really sharp. Yeah. And I think one of the best things that about the strategies Video Bolt shares and some of the strategies that Carrie shares is they're all really low cost. So if you own a small business, hopefully this episode will give you some insights on how you can grow your following, which affects your revenue growth, which eventually affects the value that your business would be worth or sell for, for inexpensive or sometimes no cost at all. I think that's a great part about social media, right? Yeah, I think it's been the great equalizer. I think, you know, social media has really given and the Internet in general has given small businesses the ability to kind of be really flexible and really adept and really kind of uh, moving forward very quickly where big companies are kind of falling behind. And you see, you know, of course, the huge companies like Amazon and those kind of things just blowing up. But I still see a bunch of small businesses being able to use social media as a way to connect with their customers, keep engagement going, get uh, coupons out to them and really, you know, just promote themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Corey and Carrie both talk about it is it's, it's not a hard process, right? It's pretty simple to learn and consistency is key with social, but it, it really can help blow up your company. It can also help you connect with your customers, like you said. So I think there's some great lessons in here and you can take this away if you're just looking to grow your company. But also when we talked about the valuation episode, which is one of our first episodes, we talked about quantity and quality of earnings. And this is something that can really help your quality of earnings. Yeah, I mean, it could certainly, you really get to control a lot. And, you know, things like Yelp and even Groupon and people are using those kind of tools to fill out like, you know, down season kind of moments in their business or get rid of excess inventory or run specials or, you know, really kind of drill down to engagement with their customers. I mean, it it can have a a negative effect as well if you're not doing a good job. But, you know, you can manage all those things and reach out to customers. I've seen some great, you know, people do some great job with, you know, negative reviews and being able to get people back engaged. And so um, I think, you know, social media has been great and it's really good to learn how to leverage it uh, to make your business more valuable because, you know, and you got to think about that ahead. So, you know, your business should have a separate, uh, account than your personal because, you know, someday you might sell your business. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, so hopefully today offers the listeners some tips and tricks and and also some inspiration um, through the story of Becca and, and learning about how a company grows from basically nothing into a $200 million exit. So let's get to it. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. 
Welcome back, everybody. And today we have a guest that I'm super excited to have on the show. And as you know, we're talking about marketing and social media strategy and how really they can increase the valuation of the company. And joining me for our interview is Carrie Cole, who is not only the executive director of global brand development and the global style director for Becca Cosmetics, um, but she's also been my best friend for the last <laughs> 20 plus years. Yeah. So, Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor. I appreciate it. So Carrie, you built Becca Cosmetics. And for the listeners who don't know about Becca, Becca is a lifestyle cosmetic brand that was recently sold to Estee Lauder for north of $200 million and, and largely based on your social media and your marketing strategies. But let's go back to the very beginning. So when you when you joined the company in 2010, what, what was it like there? It was teeny tiny. There was about eight of us at Becca. Um, and we had a very interesting past. We had been in Sephora's, we had been in Nordstrom's, we had been in Bloomingdale's and got kicked out when we were... Then going into Dwayne Reed, so we have a little bit of this hiccup of a past, um, and myself and a few other people, just a few, were brought on to try to bring the brand back to life and re-energize the brand and, and get it into a really, really positive place. So going into Becca, it was um, a brand that needed love and a brand that needed help, and that was my job. And you did a great job with that. So, you know, I know the story, but let's talk a little bit about what was your strategy when you came in? How did you reinvigorate that that brand and how did you use social media and marketing to to really launch the brand? Yeah. So, like I had mentioned, uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup to past, but um, our job was to come in and breathe that life back into the brand. And the idea was to really make the brand a little more approachable. We had a really large makeup artistry community that still lived, loved the brand, but there was another community that kind of felt the brand was standoffish and unattainable. And my job was to come in and, and kind of make it a two-way conversation and make the brand more approachable um, and more, I guess, lovable. Mm. And, um, you know, so at, at the time when I first started, social media was just starting to become popular. And we thought, well, we have a troubled past, but we have some people that are loyal Becca fans. We have a large artistry community. Um, maybe we tap into social media and use that as a two-way conversation, use that as something that makes us a little more approachable and gives us a platform to speak about the brand. We had no money, <laughs> literally <laughs> no money. People were taking cuts on their paychecks and um, you know, we were sacrificing a lot of things. So we reached out to social media as free marketing for us and then just continued to, to build that platform and, um, started really started with Instagram and, and kind of built our platform from there. But really we chose that as our marketing platform because it was free, <laughs> literally right, right. it was free and, um, then just continued to build out our, our Instagram. Yeah, no, I mean, I, m I remember that time and it, it was, it was, it was a funny time because Instagram was really just getting going. And, yeah. um, I remember you're doing the how to videos and the, the makeup videos, but you also pioneered a really interesting social media strategy, um, called the influencer strategy that some of our listeners might not know about, but could you explain, um, how you came up with that strategy and, and kind of the basics of what it is as well? So, so to me, an influencer, and I'm sure it's a word that you guys hear often, but to me, an influencer is someone that's influential. And I noticed, as I mentioned, that that makeup artistry community and that makeup artistry community was very influential. So I looked at the people and I looked at our portfolio and I thought, well, these people that are influential and interested in our brand are speaking very loud and clear about the brand and want to hold on to the brand. So how can we tap into them? 
So I went on a quest and I looked through our database and I looked through our old emails and I Googled Becca Cosmetics to see what came up. And I started to see that there was this community of really influential people. And I thought, you know what, in a time when personalization is becoming a dying art, I thought, well, what could I do to make this beauty brand a little more personal through these people that are really influential. So I started a program called um, Influencer Boxes, and I would call them Boxes of Love from Carrie. Mm -hmm. I would literally reach out to these people and say, hey, I would love to send you some Becca products and um, tell me what type of skin you have or what kind of makeup you love. And I would sit there and handwrite a note and I would say, I think this shade would look best on you or here's how to apply this. And I would put all these products together in a box and march my little tushy down to the post office and and drop that box in the mail and hope that that box would then get that influential community to start speaking about the brand. Right, right. Um, and that's that's really how you built it, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah. a lot of hard work. And I think a lot of business owners hear influencers now and they, they think that it can mm-hmm. be an easy and quick strategy to get some free marketing and free PR. But that's the reality of it is, you know, you put those boxes together, did all that research and it took time, right? Yeah, it took a lot of time and it took a lot of personalization, which nowadays the influencer market's a little more saturated and we hear hashtag ad and many businesses are thinking, well, I don't have a lot of money to spend on these people to advertise for us. But if you do something as simple as something personal, a handwritten note or putting together some of your favorite products from your portfolio, it goes a long way. And then after that, I would always follow up with them and I would say, you know, Thank you so much for loving the brand as much as we do. What did you think about the products? I would love to hear from you or would love you to write a review. Um, And it was really just that personal connection. I would always put our Instagram handle on there and tell them to follow us on Instagram. We literally started Instagram with three followers. It was like myself, (laughs) our CEO, (laughs) my mom. (laughs) And it, it was just really getting to the root of personalization. Um, and, and it started to grow and it took some time, but again, it was free. What we were doing was free other than shipping products to people. Right. Which is, it's still a low cost marketing strategy. So you start with three followers. What, what's Becca up to and what are you up to as far as Instagram followers right now, approximately? So I think, uh, for Becca, we're at 3.3 million, um, as well as myself, I'm at 60 maybe 61,000 followers. Um, but it's a, it's a labor of love. And I don't think people understand the power of uh, social media, but it can be such an amazing tool for your business. And um, it's such a great platform for you to get that personalization out there. Um, something that we started doing since the beginning of, you know, Becca's Instagram account or my Instagram account is simple things like always responding to comments. You know, think about the business that you own and someone comes into your store and asks you a question or asks you a question about your business, you want to respond, right? Because you want to be a good business person and you want to create that connection. Mm -hmm. So for social media platforms, it should be the same way. So if you're just starting your social media platform, make sure you're responding to everyone's questions, respond to direct messages that you're getting in your inbox, because it's just a new virtual way of creating that authentic relationship with your clients. Right. It, and it's just like, like you said, it was, it was, it, it's like having a conversation in a place of business, responding to a Google or a Yelp review. It's very important. And I think a lot of, a lot of the clients that we work with, um, still haven't embraced the true power of social media and that authentic conversation. Um, mm-hmm. and I know like Instagram's one Avenue, but there's a lot of different avenues that you yeah. can take with social, right? Absolutely. There's, you know, Obviously, Facebook and Twitter, if you just want to get a short message out there, Twitter is a really, really great platform. Um, But you just have to remember, like when we're not speaking, they're speaking for us. So if you're putting positive messages out there and you're creating, you know, interesting dialogue on your platforms, most likely then they're going to read that or they're going to comment that on that and then have that conversation with their other business partner or somebody else in the community. And that conversation will still continue. So it's just a really great 
social media is such a great platform for getting your business message out there, for getting products out there, so many different avenues. And, and really it's, it's free marketing. Right. It's free. Right. <laughs> So if you were, say you're a business owner listening to this podcast right now and you haven't ever started a social media account and you say, let's say Instagram is what you pick. What sure. would be your, Carrie, what would be like your top one or two things that you would say, here's what you really need to do to start a successful account? Yeah. Create interesting content. Like when you're scrolling through and scrolling through, there's a lot that you're scrolling through. So post something that's going to be authentic to who you are and be interesting. Like you want to make it, I always call it scroll pretty. (laughs) You want to make sure that it's scroll pretty so that person stops, reads your comments, looks at the picture and starts to build this mm, sensory journey per se, where they feel like they're part of your community and they're part of your business. So create content that's scroll pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, And as I mentioned earlier, respond to comments. People have taken time out of their day to go to your Instagram page to comment or to ask you a question, respond back. So often I I look at people's Instagram accounts or business accounts and I think, well, someone asked them a question. Why didn't they respond? You're not going to do that in a business meeting. Just ignore somebody. So respond to those comments, create that two-way conversation. And remember that when we're not speaking, they're speaking for us. So Have that dialogue, have that conversation, always leave your door open, Um, provide links to, to your, your dot-com pages or your phone numbers or things like that. So people can get, can get a hold of you if they have further questions. That's great. I love that. And you know, like it's a business conversation, it's two-way conversation. And if you're not Mm -hmm. talking to them, they're still talking about you. Yeah, for sure. Right. So let's bring it back to like, you know, a lot of our listeners are thinking about selling their company and I know we can't know what Estee Lauder was thinking about when they bought Becca, but I, I am probably pretty positive that the social media following and the brand that you had created through social media was a big reason Estee Lauder decided to make the acquisition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I agree with you. And you know what, something that we did during the time of acquisition is, or actually prior to acquisition is, um, we noticed that we weren't speaking. We had a very age specific demographic that we were targeting. It was this 25 to 35 year old that had some extra disposable income and she wanted to spend the money on, on beauty products. And we were constantly targeting that person. Then we realized there's this untapped market of the 13 to let's just say 22 year olds. Mm -hmm. And we weren't speaking to that audience. So prior to acquisition, we thought, well, you know what, we really need to be speaking to a larger age range. So we did a collaboration with um, an influencer that was a little bit younger and tapped into that market that we weren't speaking to. We brought her on board, did an amazing collaboration. Um, It was the best collaboration actually of all time in beauty history. And it spoke to a different audience. So I think when Estee Lauder came in and looked at us and said, wow, they're not just speaking to the you know, 20, whatever demographic with a certain income, they're also speaking to this other audience that is the next generation of people that want to buy beauty. So again, it goes back to that conversation, but maybe thinking outside the box on, on who your audience is and realize when we're not speaking, she's speaking for Mm -hmm. us again. So regardless of what age we want her to be talking about our brand or about our business. So I think Lauder looked at us and thought, wow, they, they really are, are tapping into beauty as a whole and they're creating that authentic engagement and in, two-way conversation. Um, and then this, the social media definitely is something that they looked at from a dollar perspective because your followers and how engaged your followers equate, equates to dollars for the, for the brand. Yeah, definitely. We talk, me and you have talked a lot about engagement before, but you know, and for the listeners who have listened to our valuation episode, which if you haven't listened to our valuation episode, go back and listen to that. It's, it's a great um, information and education about how businesses are valued, but we talk a lot about multiples there and your marketing strategy and even a social media strategy like this one can really increase the multiple that a business purchases you for, that a buyer purchases your company for. And, and it really can be very significant. And that's that's basically the story of Becca and why Becca had such a successful exit and acquisition with Estee Lauder. So Carrie, 
thank you so much for joining us today. Congratulations oh. on all your success. Thank um, you. Thank you for having me. Of course. And as always, if people want to follow you or follow Becca, what are where the, can they reach you? What are your handles? All that good stuff. Sure. My handle is Carrie, K-E-R-R-Y, Cole, C-O-L-E, the number 15. And Becca's is Becca Cosmetics. That's it. Easy breezy, just Becca Cosmetics. Great. Well, Carrie, thank you so much again. And best of luck with Becca in the future. Thank you. Bye, bestie. (laughs) Bye. Hey, Andy, you know what time I think it is? I think it's time to talk about our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Hey, we're back and it's deal of the week. And we have our returning guest, very special guy, Josh Sagman, who just closed the deal. And it was interesting, you know, not all businesses have the ability to sell, um, but there are always ways to try to get money for the assets that you own. So Josh has a great example of that. Welcome back. Thanks, Andy. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was a flower shop in Okeechobee, Florida, and yeah, we we tried our best to sell the flower shop. We couldn't, but they actually also own the property. So what we ended up doing was we ended up listing the property as a commercial deal, and we got a buyer. It was a small world. A guy right down the street actually sold his property for to Wawa and decided that he wanted to move some of the businesses over to our property. And uh, he came down. He came down actually last Friday, uh, decided he liked it, made an offer. We Over the weekend, we worked out the contract and uh, he went to close last Thursday. And what's great about it is he actually walked in with 150000 in cash. In in dollars and uh, the closing attorney was like, um, we can't accept that. So he went back to the bank and uh, they ended up wiring the the money over, and uh, we got the deal done. So uh, not a bad little way to get it. Even though we only got seven percent on the real estate, it was still a nice little commission. Well, that certainly was an interesting deal. Thanks a lot, Josh. I appreciate you coming in today. Welcome back. And we have a very special guest today. We have Corey Sabin, founder of VideoBolt.com. And we're talking about social media. And one of the most important things in social media these days is video. And Corey has a great you know, insight on how video is literally changing the world and how much more how much more exposure you get when you use video. So Corey, welcome. Why don't you give us a little bit of background about Video Bolt and how you're kind of helping people, you know, harness the power of video on social media. Thanks, Andy. It's great to be here. As a former newscaster, we realized in the news that what? We have to capture your attention, that we're visual learners. So that same thing is true if you look at social media. If you look at your news feed, hypothetically on new, on Facebook or on LinkedIn, People that are posting are trying to capture your attention. So what's going to do it, text or video? Well, in today's day and age, we have the attention span of about eight seconds, was what Microsoft found. To put that into perspective, the goldfish has an attention span of nine. So what does that mean? (laughs) It means that you've got to jump out at me right away. LinkedIn tells you if you're posting something in text and you're posting something in video, you'll see 20 times more engagement with video than you will with text. In Facebook, the number is even more ridiculous. It's 135% more engagement with video than text and photos. But remember, we're also lazy, so you have to let the videos autoplay because that will stop and grab our attention as opposed to just having a link. Because if it's a link, 8 out of 10 of us fail to click because we're moving on to the next thing. So video really is a powerful way to share your message and to tell your story and to capture attention in a world that's a little bit of information saturation and we're relying on social media and we're spending a great deal of time there as well as on Google and YouTube. So I think the great thing about Video Bolt and the reason why Transworld has a partnership with you now is it's so hard to, you know, kind of create the video. I mean, it's, you know, so daunting that like every day, what am I going to do about lights? Do I have the quality? Do I have the sound? Do I have the, you know, the graphics? I mean, it's a full-time job just trying to keep up. So I think Video Bolt has a great thing for small businesses to use to kind of harness that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your tool? Absolutely. Well, one of the first things we realized is that small and medium-sized businesses wanted to do video, but the challenge was exactly what you highlighted, time, 
money and of course the cost of hiring talent and getting the makeup done it worked out to about a thousand plus dollars a minute what we did with videobolt.com is brought in all former news people and then we made them available to you so you log on to videobolt.com and you can now point and click your way to a professional video with your custom background if you don't have a background There's thousands to choose from, or you could upload your own from the web, your own news person to deliver your message, and you choose them, and they're reading it live. And the best part is I have two daughters, so they play with Barbie, and they dress and undress Barbie, so we figured you can dress your news anchors as well. Put them in a suit and tie, put them in a t-shirt, whatever captures your business, add all the images, and eight minutes later, you've built a professional video that will be delivered to you with the transcripts for 500 bucks or less. That's amazing. And so just give us an idea. I, you know, Transworld's using it to promote uh, itself, obviously, you know, the, our services of buying and selling businesses. And it's also using it to promote some of our listings, which I think is really, you know, really powerful. But just give us an idea of some of the other businesses out there in the world and what they're doing. There's so many different businesses utilizing it from the hospitality space where you have country clubs that are using it to promote member events, use it for engagement to attract new members, use it to highlight construction or updates in the golf courses. You have healthcare companies that are using it to update Heart Health Month or why a doctor's good at a certain procedure or what you should know. Financial planners talking about why them to create that connection, but more importantly, to be seen as the trendsetter and talking about it's a down market right now or an up market right now. Here's where you should be investing or here's what you should be considering. You have funeral homes using it. Anything that you would put in print is more powerful in a video and every industry is utilizing video bolt and seeing that they can create that engagement at a fraction of the price by bringing in a typical TV or news crew to shoot something. All great information. Thank you so much, Corey, for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Is there uh, any way that people could get in touch with you other than going to videobolt.com that you want to kind of promote? Uh, Absolutely. They can call me at any time, 561-626-9809. That's my personal cell. And I'll be glad to look over your website and look over your marketing materials with you and share some insights on how you can create more engagement in today's digital world. Thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for Listing of the Week. Hey, we're back and it's Listing of the Week. And we are very happy to have Bianca Evans from our North Florida Jacksonville office talking about a multi-unit opportunity that uh, you may really like. So, Bianca, take it away. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate you having me on the show. Um, The opportunity is a multi-unit restaurant. It's family-friendly dining, and there's opportunity to make this a franchise. So the parameters are already there. The paperwork's already in place for it to grow as a franchise, but it is currently individually owned. There are five locations that are going with this, and the EBITDA is close to about $1.3 million. So someone out there who is either SBA-backed or looking to add to a larger group, this is a great opportunity. That sounds like a great opportunity, and why don't you tell everybody how they can reach you? Great way to reach me would just be by cell at 904-254-7846, or my email address, Bianca, that's B-I-A-N-C-A, at tworld.com. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for tuning in to our show today. If you like the podcast, don't forget to subscribe through your favorite podcasting app and leave us a review. If you have questions or suggestions for the show, visit us at tworld slash the deal board or email us at the deal board at tworld.com.